Hello and welcome to Verdictum. I am Sheetal June and in today's episode, we will talk about the constitutional amendments required for the facilitation of One Nation, One Election Scheme. The Union Cabinet led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi has approved the implementation of the One Nation, One Election Scheme proposal in India. The decision follows a presentation of a comprehensive report by a high-level committee headed by ex-President Ramnath Singh Kovind. The bill is likely to be introduced in Parliament during the upcoming winter session. In a press conference citing the Law Commission report, Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has said that the criminal justice system suffers due to multiple elections being held in a year. He said that several policemen and other security personnel are deployed in areas where elections are held, thereby causing a scarcity of manpower to handle the law and order situation. The panel, also including Home Minister Amit Shah, Law Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal as its member, has submitted the report in March ahead of the announcement of the Lok Sabha elections. Placing the report before the cabinet was a part of the Law Ministry's 110-day agenda. While centres next move on this will remain awaited, legal experts have weighed in that at least five articles of the constitution will need it to be amended in order to implement this. Critiques have said that altering these terms would violate the constitution's basic structure. Article 368 lays down the procedure for amendment of the constitution with the sole limitation being the parliament cannot alter the basic structure of the constitution. So what will be the required amendments? Let's discuss. Number one, representation of the People Act. As per the Act, elections to a House can be held any time within six months preceding the date of the scheduled dissolution on completion of the five-year term. The amendments in this Act are required to alter the fixed term of the assemblies and align election schedule. Besides, sections 141 and 152, that deals with notification for general election to the House of the People and the State Legislative Assemblies, sections 147 to 151A deals with by-elections to the House of the People and Legislative Assemblies. Number 2, Article 83.2 and Article 172. Articles 83.2 and 172.1 provide the maximum duration of the Lok Sabha and the State Assemblies respectively. According to these articles, assemblies shall continue for five years from the date of their first meeting unless sooner dissolved. There have been times when state assemblies have been dissolved before the term of the existing house expires. There have also been cases of hung assemblies when no political parties have cleared majority, adoption of a no-confidence motion or defection or any other such event. The amendment may be brought in to ensure that the term of the reconstituted assembly after the dissolution is less than five years to compensate the time in run-up to the next simultaneous poll. Number three, provisions for union territories. In tune with the amendments to Article 83.2 and 172, similar changes will be needed in Section 5, Duration of Legislative Assembly of the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Act 1991 for the Legislative Assembly of Delhi, Section 17, Duration of Legislative Assembly of the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act 2019, Section 5, Duration of Legislative Assembly of the Government of Union Territories Act 1963 for the Legislative Assembly of Pondicherry, the panel report has suggested. Number 4. Article 356, Articles 85 and 174. Article 356 allows the centre to dismiss an elected state government and impose the President's rule. An amendment to this article may pave the way to prevent the premature dissolution of the House and Assemblies. Notably, the emergency provisions contained in Article 356 was used to dissolve state legislative assemblies before the expiry of their tenure. In addition, circumstances such as hung house, no confidence motions and other such events result in premature dissolution of the house. Number 5. Article 325. This amendment is expected to have an overriding effect over Articles 243K and 243ZA. In order to have a single electoral role in elector's photo identity card, an amendment shall be made to Article 325, the report on One Nation, One Election, released in March this year, has stated. As per the document, this amendment will facilitate that the Election Commission of India should prepare the electoral role in consultation with the state election commissions. This will substitute any electoral role prepared earlier by either the Election Commission under Article 325 or the state commissions under Article 
243K and Article 243ZA. This, it is argued that the introduction of single electoral role and single electors identity card will put an overriding effect upon the provisions of state laws as every state has its own provisions for the electoral role in their respective laws related to panchayat and municipality. In addition to the above, the panel report states that a constitution amendment bill will be introduced for insertion of Article 324A for the elections to municipalities and panchayats. This insertion of the new article will facilitate the simultaneous elections of the panchayats and municipalities with the general elections of the House of the People and the State Legislative Assemblies, it suggests. Thank you for watching the video. Hope it was helpful. For more such informative content, subscribe to our channel and download the Verdictum app on iOS and Android devices.